and I, as usual, will roll a d4. And I got... Chris, what happened last time? Last time. Uh, we continued our habit of being thwarted. <laughs> <laughs> or 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 finding that that most of our efforts had really been for naught. Um, all we ended up doing was losing all our money, uh, making it to Rebek, running in a desperate chase uh, up the hill to escape mobs of angry dwarves, only to find that the uh, Baroness or whoever was already planning on sending a detachment. <laughs> And we may as well have waited and not lost our treasure. Uh, but at least we were able to somewhat ingratiate ourselves with her before she randomly showed up uh, at the walls of uh, Rip's Bluff. So now we are riding back to uh, get her done on the goblins, I guess. Yes, that is correct. And... Um... But you have you're not you have not ridden back yet. In fact, right now you still are it's the night before. As the weather, as you'll recall, is nearly hurricane like outside. There are gale force winds. Uh the weather is absolutely terrible. And so um uh the uh uh the Lady of Revik, um, she has uh, she has decided. Um, let's see, Yestra. She has decided to delay the uh, this this effort to aid Griff's Bluff until the weather clears, um, at the very least. Even while her city seems to crumble around her, and so you are here um, at the. Uh, sort of the pinnacle of this this uh, well almost like another bluff that winds its way up in the royal quarters uh, where you've met with her and uh, she introduces you to um, um, Captain Aaron Sujuk the captain of the dragoons and um, he says, you know, and he's he is, by the way, in military dress. And he he looks at you all sourly, and he says, "Is this what we must resort to, my lady?" And uh, and she looks at him and curtly says, "Do you still serve my house, Captain?" And she and he says. Of course, to death. And they have a mock-up table. A mock terrain table that they have here. Um, they use dirt and clods of dirt and sand and and um, and cloth that they've layered to kind of show what, uh, you know, like Griff's Bluff. And, uh, and he, look, he looks at Helmer. And... Uh, you didn't take your armor off, did you? After, during the ride or before or after? You're muted. Nope, still got the armor on. He looks at you and he says, You're a knight of the temple. I am. Your kind has caused us a lot of trouble over these past years. As have yours us. Well, here we are. Uh, he, that makes him smile. Uh, he points to the table uh, and he says, uh, You can see this is speculation. We do not have much reconnaissance or information on enemy forces. Uh, and out of character, these X's represent uh, infantry or ground forces. The, the circles kind of represent mounted forces or mobile forces. And the stars represent like a, like a headquarters. Um, 
And so he points to Rebek and he says, I'm sure that you've seen our dilemma on the way in. There's not much that we could provide, nor would it do much good if we marched on the road. Rebek would fall and Griff's Vale, or Griff's Bluff before we ever arrived there with our ground forces. Therefore, I will lead the Rebek Dragoons in the morning, as soon as the weather clears at least. If the thrice blessed would smile on us, the weather will clear early in the morning, and we will ride through the mud as best we can. We do not know what to expect when we get there. This is the Dragoons, you know, they'll have to ride across the Pilgrim Road. But, um, once we arrive, we do expect that the Goblin forces are sieging Griff's, Griff's Bluff on the east side of the river. If they're attacking so boldly, then they must have captured the bridges and the broken dragon trine. That is to say, the entire Eastern Pilgrim Road must be under their control and all of the way stations, and he looks back at, uh, at uh, Helmer, and all of their knights must be dead. Um, we can expect them to attempt some sort of encirclement. Griff's Bluff is designed to weather a, uh, an assault just like this. We don't know what their plan is, but they must have one. They must have some weapon, something, that will destroy those fortifications. We don't expect the goblin forces to be able to withstand a, a long siege. They have something that we don't know about. And then there's the rangers. Now, Lara, you're here, but interestingly, he doesn't, you know, you have your cloak. Um, so he, he does not notice who you are or what you are. He doesn't even know that there's a ranger in his company currently. The Black Oak Rangers have a number of elite mounted forces they could commit. We can only hope that they've taken notice. Otherwise, it may be too late for them to even help. The best that we can do is arrive by the Pilgrim Road, survey the battle, and decide if and how we could help. Now, would it be possible for Alara to send a message to her people, or would she literally have to write out there? Hmm. Putting a pin in writing out there, which might be an option, but at a cost. Um, how would you do it? How would you how would you try to send a message? I'm not sure what um, message systems they would have available in the game. I know, like back then, they would use carrier pigeons or hawks or that kind of thing. And then I didn't know if elves had a special in this world a special ability for communicating over distance or if it would literally be just uh, riding on horseback as fast as you can. I think if you don't have a spell that could do it, um, the night that you spoke into the winds, the winds actually had a magic to them. And it wasn't like a torrential downpour like it is right now. Mm -hmm. Now, a bird, um, they can't fly in weather like this, can they? They wouldn't be able to. Um, they wouldn't be able to survive, would they? If like if it was like a torrential downpour. Um, downpours would make it difficult. They can still fly. It would more depend on the wind. Gale forces. Yeah, that would be the problem. Would be the gale force winds. They can fly limited in downpour as long as their waterproofing holds out. Oh yeah, some birds are waterproof. Birds. Oh, birds. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. And then there are some that could, depending on how high the clouds are, some could fly above the clouds. But again, I don't 
think this character can charm birds. So because owls are not waterproof, are they? Um, mo all birds are technically waterproof to a degree. Oh. It's just not all can be, uh, or I should say, water resistant. If the water penetrates the feathers, they start losing that. Oh. But they can all withstand water to a point without getting. Um, they can fly through rain, but like, say, taking a bath would be a different matter. <laughs> I'll, uh, I will make a devil's bargain with you as far as riding. Um, and I'll say it's possible specifically for you because you're an elf. Um, however, it would be an intense ride. Um, and it would be just riding hard through horrible weather without sleep and then coming straight back with as many forces as you could gather. Um, would I be able to use shield to help me on the ride? You could. It's a, this is a, um, let's see. We're talking 20 miles. So you would have to ride a, a hard day's ride in, in the rain without rest or sleep and make it back mm -hmm. with any forces you find. So... Uh, I will say that you could do it, but you would be at a minus two the next day. You'd be exhausted. Mm -hmm. I think to help my friends, it would be worth it. Okay. So yeah. you're... Given that it, she's a ranger, the weather would be nothing. And to save the world or help friends, she would do anything. Okay. So he mentions the rangers. He mentions the... What do you say in character? Um, would the rangers be such that they would reveal themselves, or would she just quietly? If I mean, I I I would leave that up to you. If, if I were, what I would think is that I'm thinking kind of like in terms of battle, that in terms of command and control, it's actually quite disastrous to have a you know a, another force show up and you don't know who they are and they're unannounced and you don't know True, what yeah. direction they're coming from and. Um, that's the, the, the term rendezvous, you know, like there's all these complicated procedures to do a rendezvous. So you don't shoot okay. each other. <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem. Yeah. Um, I would be willing to ride and, and seek the aid of the black Oak Grangers. And who are you? The, uh, this captain, he's dark skinned and thin and middle aged. Short hair. Alaria takes a step forward and lowers her head. He's surprised. An elf. Your cause is an important one, and your need is urgent. Perhaps the thrice blessed has heard our prayers. It would be a terrible ride in this weather, but... If the rangers could help us, now would be the time. Alara nods. Okay. If I may, the sooner I leave, the sooner I may seek aid. Does anybody else and have anything? Oh, sorry, glances go ahead. at her friends. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of glance at my friends to kind of give a nod and say goodbye or see if they have anything else to say before I take off. Yeah. Right. They give you an extra horse to trade out. You know, if you take two horses and have one ride with you, and then when you wear one out, switch over. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Countess Yestra would, I mean, she waves her hand like, of course, you know, that's not even a, a problem. Edward raises his yes. eyebrows and says, uh, God be with you. And with you, I will be back. Oh, where does the... Um... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she would know who God is, but Edward doesn't come from this world. Yeah, it's probably like which God would, you know, but okay. Yeah, that's 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 the best he can think to say in such a, yeah. kind of a situation. All right. Arctic warriors win battles. What, uh, what do the rest of you all have to say about the, the battle plan and the assumptions about the concept of the battle? Uh, 
it's something Edward's seen before. I don't have anything to say about it as a player. I'm curious to see how it plays out. I have, I have no idea what to expect. Just I, it's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we, we have a nice cadre of experienced mounted warriors. That's a nice thing to have. I feel like we should probably be able to mow down a lot of goblins with such a force. Uh, but, as he said, they must have something else. So, I assume some of them will be riding. Helmer. Also out of character, oh, would um, Rebek know that Griff's Veil, I'm trying to remember, did they know that Griff's Veil was cursed with unusual creatures and rotting, like the food supplies dwindling and such? No, there is a sort of iron curtain between the two okay, city-states. But did, did uh, Sister Greta write about it in her letters to, uh, what's her face? You, you'll recall that the letters were um, unfinished and vague. That she said something was wrong and never defined it. Okay. Because I'm thinking they wouldn't survive a siege if they have no food. And there's still that dragon thing. Comes at a terrible time, Demon doesn't thing. it? <laughs> yep. And likely the, uh, the Count's... Um, what is it? Assistant? Is, is probably about to betray him. That's right. Is that oh, that's right, again? yeah. They rot from within over there in Griff's bluff. She stole sad. everything for her. It's a sad situation. You all say all this in character? I do. Yeah. Okay. Countess Yestra, who's also here at the terrain model, she says, Yes, my friend, uh, she said that she was troubled with something, that something was wrong there. Uh, of course, uh, I have laid claim to these lands because they are my family's uh, generations ago. I will not lie to you. The Marcher Lord despises me because he thinks I'm a heretic. There, uh, and then she looks, at, probably even looks at Helmer. And he kind of. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so it seems as if something has sowed even greater dissent in order to cause a distraction for our Marcher Lord. And, uh,. It is either something the goblins have, or knowing my friend, uh, Sister Greta, something, something more. But it seems like something has been preparing this for a long time. Um, Helmer would know, I think, several things. Uh, Maybe I, I think this is worth pointing out. Um, uh, <clears throat> you would know the composition of forces in Griff's Bluff, so that's an advantage you might have. And I will tell you, um, there are three main forces in Griff's Bluff. One are the uh, uh, the Griff's Guard, which are the guards. They are the guards both at the keep and at the city walls. Uh, and they're the main fighting force of Griff's Bluff, and they are well-trained and well-armed and disciplined, and they will probably defend the place with their life to the last. Uh, the other are an elite force, uh, House Edric's personal guard, which are uh, specially selected from both paid mercenaries and Griff's guard. Um, Sergeant Pris Fourfingers is a uh, is an House Edric guard, and is in charge of the the guard at the keep. Lastly, there are the uh, the knights of the Temple of the Thrice Blessed, of which you are a knight errant, uh, and you've been sent out into the world uh, to kind of journey and you know find your way and, and gain deeds for yourself after your your training. Um, but your brothers, your brother knights, are there, and you know that you visited the knight commander in a keep north of the temple. Um, indications are that a good number of them have died, which you knew you saw some of them being carried in uh, even before you left Griff's Bluff. And then also they guard the, the Holy Pilgrim Road into the Broken Dragon Shrine of uh, where Griff slew the Dragon Wrath, the most holy site in the Evening Lands. And uh, 
the goblins must, you know, at least by the assessment of this uh, this captain, must control that road in order to have pulled off this this siege. So uh, you don't know the fate of your brothers, but uh, well, and we know that they do, don't we? Because they they've controlled it even from so far back as when we arrived through the gate at, Dra at Dragon's uh, uh, because we had to ride back with Nob through all of the Goblin territory. And we... Right. Yeah. Dragon Shrine is crawling yeah. with Goblins and has been for at least the what, month we've been here? Yep. About and a month. there's a, another problem that would I think be apparent to Helmer and that is that riding with a full force of Rebic Dragoons may not simply be seen as salvation on the part of Griff's Bluff without some way of trying to alert or signal them and, and persuade them that you're there to help you, they may think you're in cahoots with the goblins or this is their moment to take advantage of the situation or who knows yeah somebody oh. and are they really wrong but yeah <laughs> Maybe Helmer should, uh, you know, I think maybe Helmer should ride out now to uh, Griff's Bluff and let them know what's going on. Um, so that at least it's not uh, as uh, big a surprise. Alternatively, if we don't do that, because don't, we don't know if they're surrounded just yet. Um, well, alternatively, on a march, if we can... Because I know we're coming around from the opposite direction of... Where the goblins are, because they're they're east, and we're coming coming from the west. It's very it's unlikely that the goblins have managed to encircle Griff's Bluff yet, right? Which at least that's the assumption that the captain has made, and the reasoning for that is that um, the road passes just by, uh, so it would be a very difficult defensive position for the goblins to try to, you know. It would almost benefit Griff's Bluff if they tried. I, I think it, it's known that the goblins are coming. I would think the arrival of non-goblin help uh, would be smiled on by some anyway. But also, <clears throat> you know, this is not my home and so you'll forgive, your ladyship will forgive me if I continue to speak freely, but in my view, you should take over Griff's Bluff. Sorry, Homer. The place is a complete <laughs> warren. It needs it needs something new. It, it, it's none of my business, however, so I'll say no more on the subject. She puts her hand delicately on the table uh, to get your attention, and Helmer's too, and she says... It's becoming apparent to me that we need one another. Not just that this is land that I own, but that some outside force is trying to pit us against one another. Yes. And there's inside forces that are either in cahoots or helping it right along without unwittingly. Helmer, they, you, you made friends with the the Baron, or is it Duke, or whatever? But, so you, I mean, maybe you'll do. They, at least they know that we're meaning well, hopefully, and they won't see us as traitors if we come back saying, "Hey, we brought forces." Yeah, I mean, you don't have to enter the walls. You can, you, you can. I mean, again, forgive my, forgive my, my impudence, but, but. If the goal is to defend the city, you could. There sure, surely there'd be some guarantee that that would matter to the Baron, or is it the Count? Uh, Baron von Baron. Hillsborough, Edric von Hillsborough. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. We all kind of uh, out of character. We do spit at the name of of Rebic, so them showing up might not be too. Uh... Yeah, understood. <laughs> But I mean, so, it is what it is. What what else? What else yeah. can we do? They need the help, and and if they reject it, then it just proves 
Uh, I mean, if we ride in with the vanguard of red big forces, maybe we can try and sit, you know, just see, get a view of the city. And if we need to try and send some people in to explain ahead of time, maybe we can, they won't mow us down as soon as we arrive and we can <laughs> coordinate some. I will well, say, uh, we can do. to kind of answer your point, uh, Steve, about riding ahead, uh, you do not have the benefits of being an elf. Uh, and in your full war gear, assuming you wouldn't leave it, uh, which would also be terrible, um, to ride through the night would be, well, you could face overland encounters, uh, becoming lost, um, and assuming you even make it, you probably wouldn't even be fit to battle the next day. There. All right. Then, yeah, okay, so we won't... You barely made it here, of note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I won't write ahead, and then when we get there, we can just kind of assess the uh, assess the situation and either fall back or find a good spot to strike to try to do the most damage. Yeah, is there anything like a flag of parley or something that we could show when we get there to hope, hopefully they don't just plug us with arrows if... upon arrival? I don't know. Yeah. Does Griff's Even... love have a flag? Like a uh. What's the word? Uh, must coat of arms, yes. yes. Coat of arms, yeah. The Baron surely has some chivalry. Yes. Because if you were to show up with something like that, would that... They're, they're not going to be able to uh, strike out at us. Like, they're not going to break out. And here's uh, House Rebecca. Break off their forces. Uh, hmm. Yeah, they won't break off their forces, so for them, it'll... Uh, almost the, the biggest worry from them is to wreck their morale for too long of a time when they see oh no, now them, we're surely doomed and they're not too despondent by the time, you know, we slam in their spot or or however we end up end up doing it I'm trying, I'm trying to think because I just watched a video on uh, on um, uh, medieval war tactics um and I'm just trying to think, like, who are the hills? Then we need to be on top of the hills with, our, with a little bit of infantry at the front, archers in the back. Their cavalry comes forward. Um, their cavalry's slowed down on the... So, that's, that's, that's fun. But um, the, the whole place exists yeah. uh, very literally on a, on a bluff. Um, and it has the, the town itself, which uh, is like... Well... Hmm. On a bluff. It's not letting me draw. I don't understand. Anyways, kind of... And then and then you have a, another kind of raised terrain um, uh, around it. Uh, and it even creates these uh, eddies and waterfalls along the river here. Um, Ooh, just, just, nor it. just north of the, uh, the, br the main bridge. The, the temple is uh, just on the, the lower part of this terrain here. For some reason, it's not letting me draw, you know, but on the near side of the bridge, on the west side of the bridge. Um, okay. So then this place, this spot would be really heavily defended. Like, they would have this um, ready with, with archers and stuff. So over here, I think we could expect a little bit of a of an attack from up here because if, if they were preparing they would have gone all the way up here and hacked and slashed their way down that road to get to that side you didn't hear about that when you left but that's possible um you know that they could have now one advantage that you have is uh they either have to come all the way from up here uh or they have to find a way to uh to ford um and uh, the the long river would be no easy thing to ford. Um, but if they can come from that direction, it would be pretty catastrophic if they had enough large enough force. And uh, you know something you already know is that there's these outlying villages to the north in the area called the uh, the hinterlands, like Western L and towns like that. And they will have been evacuated and brought within the the gates that day. You know to the extent possible, right? So, um, if this spot's 
defended. I think this spot, that spot, would be really well defended. So if they do come up this way, uh, our rival can uh, uh, probably take care of that problem very quickly. Um, especially if we have, because uh, I don't, I don't know if if all the knights are gone and their their cavalry. Um, isn't going to be quite as strong, but if we show up with a whole bunch of these dragoons, that's uh, it's a bit of a game changer, at least for one of the little skirmishes. Okay, yeah, I suppose one downside uh, that, that that you could balance certainly when you get there, you can look and see and decide if there, you want to change this plan. But if that's your plan, that would be like a two-hour ride. Uh, into the outlying town. That's about how long it took you last time. Uh, in the mud, it might take longer. Um, on the other hand, you know, yeah. <laughs> so is that is is that what you suggest to him? Is to actually come from the north, assuming that yeah. there's not some obvious thing going on that you change your mind and react to? Yeah, that would be that would be my suggestion if we did that. And then, um, because the goblins, the goblins are going to be attacking all night. And in the morning, they're going to be at a disadvantage, a bit of a disadvantage. But uh, also, the he heavy rains will keep them from being able to cross the river for for a little while. No, also, would the ground be saturated enough that they can't tunnel without Ooh. severe risk of collapse? Because that was a common... Yeah, the, the heavy rains, uh, you know, are essentially what will allow you to arrive when the battle begins instead of in the middle of it, at the very least. Uh, and it, it, you know, presumably, yeah, like what you're saying, it should slow them down, it should make fording the river difficult, it should make controlling... I mean, being a, an attacker in the mud is, is it's less than ideal. Um, and and the captain that has noted that like they must have something, they must have something where they think they can end it decisively and quickly because uh, this is a terrible plan. There are also goblins. Yeah, either that or it's just crazy. Fully stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be that one smart goblin or. Yeah, hopefully they're not. They don't have a demon with the magic sword helping them oh, out. Oh. Crumbs, a flying demon of the magic sword. You're right. <laughs> That's what no, I was worried no. about when he, they were like, they might have something that's helping them, but yeah, the wall's not really going to help us with him. <laughs> the captain's like, um, uh, I'm sorry. It's a metaphor or something. It's an expression. Don't worry yeah. about it. Str a strange probably, expression. Yeah. I come from a strange probably. place. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I mean, with Sister Greta no longer around, I don't know if that uh, both of silence for that particular thing is... Uh, I think we should probably yeah <laughs> party huddle. I think we should probably mention the whole. Should we tell them? They might have a demon with the magic sword. <laughs> I think we should tell them they might have a demon with the magic sword. Okay, we have our own magic sword too, right? So yeah. Hey, it's like a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news, right? Wait, we told <laughs> them can't... about this magic sword They're already. Ours, right? Okay, <laughs> they know about Edward's, uh, Sir Brandon's blade. Okay, well, I guess we should break. <laughs> All right. Okay, so it's an expression, but because I just decided it should be an expression, it was actually the metaphor is based on it was a story that actually happened to us. Maybe they you should. They look. They look her. shocked, and they're they're silent. Uh, yeah. They're they're yes. Some sort of demonic creature with a cursed sword is free in that region. You jest. This is no time for these sorts of things. Uh, no, indeed. It's the time to be up forthcoming with all of possible relevant information. And so, we tell you true, it is so. You sound like mad people. Do we? Speak of things like that. See, but do we think? actually sound mad, though? I suppose not. We don't know that this creature is with them, but we do know that it is there somewhere and has some kind of magical weapon. Well, a magic sword, to be precise. <clears throat> I see. Um, 
well, and actually she goes over and she looks through some books. She mutters to herself. Um, you hear her say something about her ancestors, and then she's like, No books, sir. That's not funny. Well, this confirms some of, some suspicions. I wish that you had spoken of this earlier. The, did this demon say anything? Did it say what it wanted? Where it was going? What, why are you even alive, for that matter? I think it, it mostly say just again. flew off in the direction of the tower or something, right? Yeah, I think um, the paraphrase it said something like along the lines of "Ha ha, thanks, dorks. See you later." Yeah. It, it, it thanked us, <laughs> and uh, there, therein lies a tale. Of this yeah. creature at first claimed to be the descendant. No, what was his name, sir, or something or other? Some Rodrick. pasty. Kid Young Lord who Roderick didn't deserve his ancestors, but um, and, but he's God. seen, but he knew about the sword, and, and we were in search of it, supposedly held by a goblin tribe. We went and subdued the tribe long enough to take the sword. At which point, the young lord suddenly shredded his own skin from within and turned into this demon creature, took the sword, and flew away. Brauben the Younger? That sounds familiar. Yeah. The sword was, yeah. the sword, he claimed the sword was Griff's blade. Robin was a dandy. He never would have even left the courts. Well, I, 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 I that doesn't, certainly that matches the demeanor of the one we knew. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. he, he didn't leave without a demon hiding in his skin at least it seems so or he was a duck or he was he was mimicking the other and the other yeah, is I mean, still there at some point there was a demon that skinned him and wore his skin and it we, I didn't find out until you know the hard way that that seemed to be the case now <clears throat> uh ben and edward um now i mean obviously alara you're an elf you know so like that's established but but Ben and Edward, you look different than everyone here. You don't look like you're from around here. Um, you have, I think Ben has fair skin, although blemished and yeah. the, the bite and everything going on. Uh, pretty scarred and nasty, yeah. Yeah, but then Edward is pale. Is uh, pale. Fair, yep. yeah. Uh, pale so with sort of reddish brown hair. You certainly don't look like you're from around here. And so she looks at you as you say these things and she says, to, to Ben and Edward, where are you from? Uh, far away. Yeah, far away, indeed. Then what are you doing in the evening lands? <sighs> okay. That's a good question. It just <laughs> my, kind of my lady, ended up here. It's not yes, like I planned it. Oh, we didn't. It's all been a rather, rather an amazing much for us to be perfectly honest my lady but uh we we sure. rarely have had the chance to sit down and really piece it all together as far as but, i can tell these thrice blessed that i didn't know about did something and we we woke up at the dragon shrine well that's one way of looking at it tell the whole story on your next album <laughs> i think i mean i think that's a good way to put it we could, that's i mean that's that's essentially what happened and you know do no, we have? Do here. we have you? What are these things that we are carrying with us? You mentioned them last time, and I had forgotten about this sort of artifact, some sort of symbol, Ross. Yeah. You, so you have a um, uh, what would be like a symbol, like that uh, that has the the dragon on it, that is the the royal symbol of Perinval. But you also have this case. Uh, that's like a portfolio that is like a long contract called a um, a mark of or of of writ. Uh, let's hold on just a second. I have it right here. Uh, a letter of mark is what you have. Yeah. It has a, a commendation from Council Ryko, which has been revoked, and then furthermore a letter of mark from Councilor Mudbilt following it. And it uh, it commissions you as agents of the state of the kingdom of Perinval. Yeah, do we want to 
gonna make the... Yeah, I mean, if not now, when? Are they just gonna think we're like foreign powers? They already they think we're crazy. To... And, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been, it's been crazy from the moment we showed up here. Yeah. We're, we're lucky to be in the room with them. I say all I, this out loud. I, I mean, I've lost it, patience for all of this. We're here. All we want to do is help the halflings, for God's I was sake. Say, is Nob here? He found us. And yes, he has Nob found us. Yeah, he found us at the dragons, uh, the ruined dragon shrine or whatever so, it's called. And fix we, the wall uh, and buy our beer. Yes, we just want to help them fix their wall. And, and we, to do that, we found ourselves here. But before that, yes, we, we, we come from a land of far away called Perenval. More. Please don't say you're at war with Perenval, too. Because <laughs> if you are, I'm not really <laughs> from there. You make it more complicated. I'm not really from there, either. So oh. <laughs> the thrice blessed yeah. have got some crazy plans, and yes. we ended up here. Yes. She uh, takes a she takes an illuminant illumined text, you know, and puts it down on the on the the train model, uh, and it's this you know old book of, book of uh, that. We'll get to that one later, actually. Oh no! <laughs> yes, uh, but no, not in this town, actually. Uh, <clears throat> so no, this is uh, like a big storybook, uh, a big oh. you know thing of genealogy and stories and an old version of the common tongue and it it shows drawings of people slaying dragons and stuff and the history of the evening lands and she says um, my family has a interesting past that is why the Baron hates me so and some things that I hold now and that is why the strife is between us but I can only be true to what I know. It happened about 50 years ago. Since you are not from these lands, you do not know our faith. Well, I'm sure you've seen the marks of it everywhere you've gone here. The Church of the Thrice Blessed follows the holy convocation that reestablished the old empire's religion in a land far from here. A, uh, a high oracle gave us our laws, reordered our society, and there was a dawn of a new age. But some 50 years ago, um, just around the time I was born, all contact was lost with the convocation. And we have entered what we call the second evening each fife stands on its own now. There is no central uh, kingdom. Uh, the, the kingdom of Fesselmark was how we paid tribute to the convocation. And 20 years ago, there was a great war. The war was against people who had changed. And all of our cities were nearly lost. But my, my father and the Marcher Lord, uh, Hillsbro, fought together along with the dwarves. And we pushed them back across the, e the, the, the river that's far east of here and east of the, the Black Spine Mountains. There we built fortifications. The dwarves still hold those fortifications to this day for anything that lies east of that river. The, uh, the sun I actually have to bring out my own my own uh, book for this. The uh, the son of the king of Fesselmark of the of the time. He he betrayed the kingdom. His name was Nilkus. And our stories hold that he allied with demonic forces. Symbols of uh, of gods from this place. Uh, she, you know, and I'll hold up the book, but she has the stuff in the book too. Um, gods that uh, were here before people were even here. We had not heard anything from across the river in years. It seems to me that whatever is east of that river has an interest 
to come back and finish what they started. Whether it's a new war led by the great traitor, the arch traitor, or something else. Either way, I suppose it all begins with stopping this goblin army, which increasingly I begin to perceive as a mere tool. Among many tools. Well, we are happy to help however we can. Okay. Well, so, I am anyway. Um, but just a question very quickly, my lady. Once it's all said and done, do you have it within your power to help Brandonsford? Helmer looks at her. <laughs> she goes to the window and opens it to the night air as the rains pour down. You hear the sounds of fires and screaming in the streets. And she says, In a week's time, I believe the fate of Griff's Bluff and Rebick and Brandonsford all might become clear. I think increasingly we're in this together. We'll either all survive and prevail and come together, or we will all fa fall and perish. Edward sighs deeply. All right, so Alara, if, well, first of all, do you all want to do anything else before Alara departs? Prairie back. All right, so Alara. Quick question. You, oh, go ahead. Um, would Alara, as an elf from her discussion previously, know of what that goblin creature desires what it wants because I remember that was one of the things we needed to stop it or is that still an unknown I don't remember that but that's an interesting question so you're saying there's something she was given information when she came back to speak to the rangers and I didn't know if the elves knew what this goblin creature who went to the gem throne in the wilderness if we would know as rangers what it was that thing according to prophecy would want what its ambition about, was are you talking about the demon yes oh the demon oh yes in case they face him it seems like it would be um beneficial to let them know one of the ways to so this is out of character and yeah you, i don't know that you would share this and we have we have mentioned this before that uh you kind of hold a secret uh, you know that like there are kind of two sides to the history of the old human empire. Now, the humans of the Fesselmark and of the Evening Lands have a glorified view of history. They, they believe, and, and it's true that they have heroes and everything like that, but the other thing that happened in the course of human history is um, just as your people came here before theirs, what they call the elders or the builders or the ancient ones, um, uh, and you built these towers and all these strange structures, uh, including the, the church that's on this hill. Um, uh, you brought with you a magic that had destroyed your civilization. And uh, you fled into this place. This was... Um, 1,500 years ago. Wait. I think. Set a thousand years ago. Yeah, anyways. And uh, you came here, and there was a type of magic that you held uh, that you... that is basically evil, that you know that you shouldn't use and you shouldn't touch it and stuff. And um, the, the humans destroyed your people um, and became the old kingdom, this, you know, that they glorify the past about. And then those same humans also used that magic. They preserved it and then began to learn about it and use it. And um, you know that they also became not just decadent, but incredibly evil. And um, so is the sword of that magic, is the demon of that magic? You do know that demons are attracted to the, that 
that magic, this this deeply evil thing. Um, and uh, so, to you, this is just a natural result of years of willful ignorance on the part of humans that greatly outnumber you and refuse to look at the truth and would probably kill you if you tried to tell them what the truth was. But I wouldn't know what his ambition was to try to stop him. Just that what he's a, pro a product of. Now, demons, I don't know that you would have a strong sense of what they are any more than a human would. Like, okay. uh, the, the humans probably actually have more lore about demons than you do. Um, okay. <laughs> I got a book on it. Yeah. That's true. Oh, um... I hadn't told him that. I'm not telling you. <laughs> I still have... I think I would... Let's see. I have a lore book, too. So I might just take that with me and see if the elves have anything on that. Because I'm guessing there would be someone there that could translate it. Oh, is it the the, the book about uh, the uh, the demonomicon of Igwilv, chapter 9? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you have that on you? And do you want to carry it? Uh, I have that. It's in my backpack. That's true. You, you all did put it in. Nine? It, it's a volume or like volume nine. And it's just, that's okay. what the book's called. Yeah. Okay. I had it volume five. Oh, sorry. My, my bad. Yeah. I was always thinking, I thought just yeah, you have no. a the, an earlier volume. We'll just get the whole mm. set. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I mean, you, you, if you, if you have it in your backpack, you could try to, to ride that with, you know, and, and take it with you if you want. You want yeah. to do that? Okay. All right. Well, why don't we resolve that? Actually, let's get to uh, the ranger fort in the rain. Um, and uh, we'll let's see here. Uh, Meanwhile, to the north. <laughs> yeah, you you make it here. Um, you know, early in the morning. Um, and it is still just pouring rain uh, and it has been a, a miserable ride but as you said necessary if you should execute the duties of your oath and um, okay um, and, and you make it soaked and wet and everything and you realize that this is an emergency now one thing is that the rangers of Black Oak their whole thing has been to try to defend the North against the goblin threat and against your people. So what's the point of that when the entire thing you're defending to the South is about to fall to the goblins, I guess. Right. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know, but like you, you know that you only have moments to try to tell everyone to get to their horses and go right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. You've made it. Yeah, this is. Um, you know, I would hours probably later. shout out something to the effect of the goblins are about to eradicate the inhabitants of Griff's Bluff and Rebek. Um, we must ride to Griff's Bluff. Captain Cenarian, uh, you know, she comes to you and you know immediately responds and she says to arms and like everyone discipline and swiftly without uh, uh, without. Um, um, without questioning, immediately starts to gather their equipment and prepare their horses. Uh, and and she says, uh, Alara, tell me what's happening. The goblins have taken over the road. Let me see if I can pull up the map again. Ta-da! Um, oh, no. Okay, I have it here. Okay. Goblins have taken over the road leading to Griff's Bluff on the opposite side of Rebek. And they may be working to encircle the city. They have enough to definitely place it under siege, and if they breach it at all, the city will fall. Rebek is writing to aid, but whether they will be able to help or will fall as well is unknown. So Captain Cenarian is already gathering her own equipment uh, and preparing it as everyone's rushing around you. Um, but is talking to you as even as she does this, uh, she says, um, she says, uh, Rebek riding to aid Griff's Bluff. This is dire indeed. And it's, it's not possible. 
it's not possible. The goblin tribes of of the east along the dragon shrine, they're they're disorganized. They're not unified. They have unified around something, and the Queen of Rebek has reason to believe that they have something, or there is something that they may wield or use against Griff's Bluff, that they have a, something we do not know. Very well. I'm afraid you cannot rest, my friend. We ride together. We have to fulfill our oath. To Griff's Bluff. All the rangers just rapidly um, saddle their horses and gather their equipment and prepare to ride out in the darkness and the rain. Uh, the humans riding under lantern light. Um, meanwhile, um, the rains persist into the next day. It's hard to imagine how any warfare could happen in this condition. Um, it takes well into the morning, unfortunately. This is pretty bad news. But eventually the rains abate. And it leaves a, uh, a wet, soggy ground that makes for very hard riding. And um, let's see here. Um, is there anything that you all do before you prepare to ride out with, uh, with Captain... Um, uh, Captain Aaron. Can we get, can I get a lance? Absolutely. That's yeah, they, they just give you um, I was like, cool, I, I never used a lance. <laughs> I'm going to uh, go over to Helmer. That's no idea what he's doing. Uh, Helmer, is your, do you, is your mace, any, what do you wear, wielding a sword or a mace? Oh, uh, Helmer wields a, I believe I've got a sword. I haven't swung it in so long. Oh, that's bright. Yeah, sword. Anything special about it? No, just a regular old sword. Okay, I'm going to say, uh, Elmer, my friend, this thing uh, has never been deserved by me, and at least for this battle. How about we trade swords? Elmer's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. no, no, you're the wielder of the sword. You have to. Where's the officer? <laughs> Well, I'm only going to ask one more time. Are right, he kind of frowns and smiles and frowns and smiles and, and like just he's in awe holding the sword and he um, I know you'll, his and yeah, I know you'll make good use of it. Meanwhile, I'll try to make use of this and hold up my bow now that Ben finally has his own. I thank you. I, I hope it is put to good use and both of our parts. Um, some of the dragoons, uh, they're mounting up and they actually pat you on the back, Helmer. They're like, ah, we're so happy that we have a liaison with us. It is probably certain death anyways to ride out in the aid of our enemies, no offense, but um, at least we have someone that knows the lay of the land and they smile at you. And Helmer smiles back and says, well, should we die, we die in strange company. They laugh. Um, you, uh, you're you preparing your weapon. You see the hilt. The sword is as perfect and flawless as the legends say, um, without blemish and perfectly sharp. Um, it is uh, the, the oaths of Brandon uh, wrap and cover the hilt in filigree and writing. It reminds you that there is something about your past that is at least true. And... Um, you all mount up and you prepare to ride um, making it across the muddy soil Helmer your whole life been taught about the thrice blessed expected to hate Rebek that there was this holy struggle that you're expected to engage in and you found so many secrets and lies um but the war that you have prepared for has come, and uh, you, uh, you ride for hours with the Dragoons. Um, I should have mentioned 
uh, I think um, <clears throat> Squint or not, I'm sorry, Knob would have asked Helmer too. Like, we, we fought uh, in in um, in my village, but uh, I, I've never I've never had I've never done this before. What, what what do we do? He's got little Hobbit armor, you know. Of course, they have little people armor somehow, or like kids armor, you know, like Gondor had or something. <laughs> yep. Well, my friend, we stand and observe the battle, and then when it comes to it, charge in and hope to see each other. It's little comfort to him, um, and anyways, you all ride for for hours. It's uh, it is uh, hard riding too, and what's worse is apart from the ground being soft and muddy everywhere is that uh, the rains have left a thick mist everywhere. Nonetheless, eventually, you uh, you get to the uh, the gates of... You can see the, the bluff in the distance. Do we, do we happen to pass by our uh, cart on the way? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No. No way. Uh, let's not. see here. Uh, here we go. Um, and you can hear the din of battle in the distance. Um, Griff's Bluff is now under siege. Now, from where you are, you can, uh, you can see a couple of things. For one, you could ride off the road, make your way to the north, to Western L, to your home, to try to intercept the possibility of anything making it across the river or trying to encircle to the north. Um... In addition, you can you can hear off in the distance the uh, the gathering of hooves on the west side of the river. Uh, Helmer, this tells you that this must be your brothers. Um, now, based on the amount of noise you hear, there must be hundreds of goblins and and other things. So it sounds like they're about to commit suicide, like uh, for something you don't know. But you can hear hoof beats in there to the west of the river. Um, switching the panning the camera, Alara, you also arrive. Um, you as well have a mounted force. The math will be a little bit different, but um, being the ra being rangers, you actually see these dragoons. You can see them on on the road. You see your friends, and something else you see is you will have had to have passed by the village of Western Owl, and the goblins have not taken it and don't seem to be occupying it or using it. And Western Owl is uninhabited? Yeah, too, but not perhaps not perfectly. Like, you know, there might be stubborn peoples that aren't going to leave, uh, but, you know, anyone who values their lives has been evacuated into the gates of Griff's Bluff. Hmm. But the goblins just went around it and they didn't bother to... It looks as if they never went around it, so uh, I'll just kind of scribble on the screen here. So if this is, if this is Griff's Bluff uh, and there's a road that goes south of it and there's a bridge and there's a river, right? Um, mm -hmm. The Western Elves like up here somewhere, and the goblins control the bridge and are sieging the city from here. Uh, so you came from here, and you could verify that there were no goblins in this town. It was mostly vacant. Uh, meanwhile, you all are coming from the road. You do not see them yet, uh, but you do hear mounted cavalry uh, rallying somewhere west of the river. And then... Um, yeah. And I'll start with Alara. What, what do you do? So, a quick out-of-character question. Would Alara be under the command of the rangers here, or would I be acting on my own, helping my friends? How would her... I mean, it's up to you. Now, you can also... Okay. I will say, as a player, you can command them as a force. Like, if you kind oh, of imagine... Sweet. Imagine yourself as kind of lieutenant to Captain Scenarian. Uh, but you're the you're the expert. You're the liaison that has been here. You know the place. Uh, you have friends here. You know you know what's going on. 
So you sort of are in command, if, or if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And is... Are the Revic forces heading straight for Griff's Bluff, or are they going down and around to intercept the goblins, from what we can see? From what you can see, they're approaching Griff's Bluff via the road. You don't know where they're going to go from there. But you can okay. intercept them. Uh, you can attempt to intercept them, or you can do something else. Like, I mean, you can join them if you want, or you can mm -hmm. stay separate. I lean towards um, being separate and attacking the goblins on multiple fronts. Very well. Uh, before, all right, in that case, I'll pan the camera over to you, Helmer. Um, now, again, you don't see them, okay? Uh, so, uh, approaching from the road, uh, you can hear the battle. It seems to be on the east side of the city. Um, you, you also, this is way too far off, so like, you can't see the settlements. Those are miles away, okay? Um, they have not encircled the city on the west side, and you hear hoof prints somewhere to the southeast on the west side of the river. What do you do? Well, uh, we wouldn't know that Western L is okay. You would not know, no. Yeah. I think we would head, I think Helmer would head north because hearing the hoof, uh, the uh, cavalry to the south there, he would assume they can hold their own. Um, so he would think it would be best to, to head north and, um, and, and also if there's nothing coming from that direction, then it would be an attack from the, uh, from the direction and, and squishing them in. Um, but uh, if, he, if, if we meet up with um, um, yeah, if we meet up with the rangers yeah so if you do that uh, so you I'm hearing you say that you're you would you would head north because that was your plan and you know and you, you don't know so in doing that you would meet up with them so like as you start to ride, uh, you encounter one another in a, uh, a rendezvous in the field. You see one another, uh, and um, undoubtedly the captain is like, these mounted forces, uh, Helmer, Sir Helmer, who are they? Are they friend Those or foe? Are the they are friends. The rangers uh, hoist a signal, and they uh, they hoist a, you know, a, a, a banner to signal them. And uh, the rangers gather, and you all... Uh, meet with Captain Cenarian and uh, um, Alara, and yeah, and then uh, the uh, Captain Cenarian says uh, Rebic Dragoons, this is a strange day indeed. And uh, the Captain's like, yes, uh, I suppose that the time has come that we must work together. Our plan was to ride through the northern settlements. We suspect that they must have some plan to encircle the city. It cannot be that they're just trying to siege it. Why not? All right. No, I mean, why Why can't that be their plan? <laughs> well, we can only hope that that is their plan. Um, even... Uh, they would not last that long against uh, Griff's Bluff. It is heavily fortified. Eventually, the goblins and, and this weather, they'll succumb to, to disease and, uh, and they'll have to depart the field. Okay. Well, that sounds confident. Did you see anything to the north, to the settlements? Uh, Captain Cenarian says, and, and by this point you were just a couple of miles away, you know, because you rode up and you can actually see it does look vacant. And Captain Cenarian confirms for you, uh, no, uh, none of the goblin forces have encircled to the north or across the river. All right. And now Helmer's like, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> All right. What do you do now? 
And uh, yeah, each of you right. have like a, a force, so this is both, I'm kind of asking both uh, Birdie and Steve, like what do you all want to do? You each have kind of a force that you can use. When you mentioned the village was up here, were you referring to the fact that it was north or the fact that we were on a hill with a vantage point? Uh, this is uh, downhill, actually, in a river oh. valley. Uh, the um, so like the, the, this drawing here. This this is the road, the Pilgrim Road. It runs east west. There's the long river that's uh, east of Griff's Bluff, and then the, this is like Griff's Bluff. This pentagon I drew, and it's up on a bluff. It's up on a hill, and so the goblins must be trying to siege it from the east. Uh, you haven't actually encountered the goblins yet. Meanwhile, you all have ridden. Uh, the dragoons have met you in the fields to the north, miles to the north in the towns. Um, yeah. If we go, uh, if we go to, uh, the north here, uh, we can set up our lines and get the, uh, infantry to start firing, uh, volleys into their, into the goblin troops and hope we can pull them. And then when they come, we can have both of our, uh, cavalry come from, uh, while they're heading towards the archers and the infantry, we can, uh, pincer them and then just keep doing that until they're so wrecked on this side that we can just charge in. All right. I have to do a bunch of math because I'm about <laughs> to, um, well, first of all, uh, Birdie, what do you think? And what would you want the Rangers to do? Like, so Steve, I guess you're suggesting like some kind of, um, a pincer, like where you have, uh, two yeah. mobile forces that can kind of encircle them. Yeah, I want to mm -hmm. harry them with the archers and then get them to go, ah, let's it. That would technically put them fighting three directions at once because they would also have Griff's Bluff to deal with, I assume. What few forces they have there. Yeah, because if they've got the uh, uh, cavalry to the, uh, to the south uh, attacking there, then they would also be dealing with stuff of walls from uh, Griff's Bluff itself, so it would be uh, three, and all they would have that bridge, they wouldn't be able to get across. Mm -hmm. or, they don't have a whole lot of places to run. Break. If we can route them, mm -hmm. extra bad, because kill ball them. I'm doing all the math. I apologize, this is Maybe a downside to this system is like I have to do the doing the math by myself now. Like the, so, that's <laughs> the, I see a big downside because um, these are things that are going on in the battle that are crucial to you, but they're not near you. Like right, so you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to affect them, but they're going to affect you later. Um, let's see here, thirty five. Oof. Okay. Uh, that did not sound good. I need a calculator. Oof for the goblins, you mean? Right. For that, yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't say that's interesting, so I think we're okay. Is that? <laughs> uh, 122. 22. My favorite is when he just says, "This is really bad." <laughs> 22. 94. 122. 94. I'm going to announce it because it would be really boring for me to sit here and do math by myself. So even though your character doesn't know this, I'm going to show you what's going on in the battle. But your character cannot act on this. So meanwhile, in the southern portion of the battle, the knights of the thrice blessed ride in a suicidal charge against a goblin horde that has fortified itself in your sacred temple, which is an affront that cannot be, it, it can't, it, you can't, you can't. So, like, even if it's suicide, they have to do this. Uh, so the uh, the knights they they charge against these uh, these heavily fortified goblins. Um, and let's see, sheen difference minus hundred thirty three. Okay, actually, it'd be twenty. And so it says there's a difference of 20. So the winning side experiences 10% casualties, first of all. 10% casualties. And 
The losing side, 30%. And they're not fatigued. Uh, the enemy is moderately fatigued. And I'm going to see if they drive them back from the temple. That's, that's a big one, right? F and R. Holds the battlefield, must retreat. And they do, in their suicidal charge, just in sheer, just like absolute shock, uh, they, they charge into the temple grounds and push the entire goblin force back. Oh, this is, this is you all. That's not, I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. And uh, they push them into the forests. Uh, something, smoke chokes the air in the battles to the s south of Griff's Bluff as they have burned down the forests all around and used its, the, its rotted wood for siege craft. Uh, the goblins uh, reconstitute in the forest. The next battle, um, is there are like multiple fronts here, um, is north of there. There are two siege fronts. So you're actually going to be in one of these here. A bit of load. There we go. Um, and let's see. That is one. It is 45. Okay. D100 plus 45 for the defenders. Uh, ooh, that's real bad. Five. Oh, I did the one you like, uh, Father Chris. I did the one you like. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is really bad. That yeah. was the one we didn't want you to do. Roll, <laughs> Roll a one for the goblins. I know, right? Like, let's see how the goblins do. Uh, but let's see, their force modifier, their battle rating on that front is with Ugarax the Foul is a 35. So it's a D100 plus 35. And they, they do better. Yeah. 33 plus 35. Um... So that's pretty bad. The I already counted for the defenders' defenses minus forty. Okay, so it says that on a twenty-eight, um, the the victors in this case uh, siege one. Uh, they experience ten percent. The goblins, the, uh, the the griff's guard, which is assailed in two directions. Uh, they experience 30% casualties. And this will determine, I think, whether or not they actually uh, lose the wall. So, um, in, the force is not fatigued, moderately fatigued. And then lastly, uh, 20... Oh, wait, no, that's not true. Uh, there's siege options here. Sieges. It says the defender... Multiplies the defending troops by four in the troop ratio. My bad. And they can't retreat or route. And their casualties well, are halved. You, you can leave ten men to defend a tower. Yeah. Against, like, hundreds of men worth of an army if they have enough food. Yeah, so... And, and <clears throat> enough arrows. So, actually, uh, it's actually kind of a draw. Now, let me... Uh, I actually have to kind of change the battlefield where you all are at because... It's changed. This this is reversed. This should be. This is kind of facing. Um, this is kind of facing um, west and not east. Um, and you have two of these forces, which I can't even get to fit on here. Probably. Because I was not prepared for the rangers to show up. Okay, so you show up, and I'll, I'll tell you what you see here. Um, you see that they have, uh, on this part of the wall, um, so you're further off, to be clear, okay, right? Like, you're not, like, literally right there, okay? Uh, but there's this, uh, this road leading into the, the northeast side, or the, the east, east side of the city, and uh, they have surrounded it both with siege craft and um, it looks like they've taken the outer tower that's used as like a maybe a um, a toll station or something and they have turned it into a command post and maybe half their forces are acting as a rear guard 
and the remainder of their forces are dug in, and they've erected um, catapults and and stuff. And you can you can see as you ride up that the catapults aren't like just tossing you know stone and and trying to topple walls and fire and things and oil. They're putting dead bodies in them, and uh, it's clear that like they're trying to terrorize and uh, cause disease and, and disarray and stuff. And they're even putting goblins in it with bombs and stuff and just tossing the goblins over the walls who do not survive, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. And on top of all that, you can actually see things flying overhead. And they're dropping things as well. All right, what do you all do? How so can... wet is the wood for their catapult system? Everything's wet and muddy out here. Everything is wet and muddy. Yeah. Worth a shot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a good, good. Yeah, you have pitch. That's right. Um, now, I was just debating if we could set it on fire. Hold in any that way thought, though, no, because they have like, but so you can decide the battle as like two commanders. So this would be uh, Birdie and Steve, like as the commanders of a force. You commit your forces, and then beyond committing the forces, I'll roll. I'll roll the battle results, but I won't tell you. And then, as individuals, you can commit to the battle where you think you think it matters the most, and I'll give you options there. And what you're saying, I think, might come into play with that. Okay. Is it I'd like? My idea is to um, have the uh, infantry down here with the... Uh, you want the dragoons to dismount and, and act as infantry forces? Was it is uh, all we have is uh well they're dragoons, they're dragoons or... so they they can dismount and they can like okay. just uh they can they can you know leave their forces in the in the woods and then they can march forward as infantry if you prefer okay no because what I'd like to do is uh fire uh arrow volleys into the ranks of the goblins to try to uh like not just kill them but kind of piss them off so that they end up breaking rank I want to mess with them their discipline um, so that when a uh, thing of goblins comes out uh, to try to get rid of these archers then we just squish them uh, with uh, inf uh, um, cause I'm expecting just goblin infantry to run after so if our we just kind of cross rides uh, just would just cut them down okay so get you're trying to, to break rank yeah. yeah I want to I want to pull them in and then just Use the cavalry then, yes, and fold fold one of these two ranks. I got you. I think I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Alara, roll a d6. Oh. You want to uh. not get a one or a two, or maybe a one. It'd be a one that you don't want to get. I got a three. Nice. Hey. Okay, that's not great. A one. I like it. Yeah. Um, uh, there is something that you see going on here. Um. Uh, Alara, off in the distance, this will not happen this round, this battle round, but you can see with your elf eyes off in the distance, there is a force of riders that ridle, that is, uh, it rivals your own, and they have seen that uh, a large force is encircling this, this part. Now, whatever plan they had, they are also giving up on their plan, and they're riding here to reinforce the goblins here. They'll be here the next round. Okay. Okay. So we basically have one round to flee or brace. Um, and they'll be coming, you know, up from this direction. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen when you attack this. But uh, but that being said, what do you think about Steve's plan for this round? Like baiting Oh, I think and... Steve's plan is great because goblins do tend to have terrible discipline. And a small group of footmen would probably bait them and cause some of the others to panic, potentially. All right, um, now I'm gonna do the math. Meanwhile, um, well, actually let's kind of do the math bit by bit here and then kind of see. So um, we'll start with the D100 of this force because I'm, I'm gonna kind of do this in phases. That goes really badly, um, a nine, and then you have a plus 35. So, oh, was that bad for us? Yeah. 
I just oh, rolled no. it out. And then, and then I'm going to see how they kind of respond, you know. Now, this is the arrow fire portion, so this is going to happen in a round. In other words, you can't, like, do all of this in one round, is my thought. Great news, they are not that hot either. However, um, they also... Nope, they're... Yeah, they're not. So, 40... Um, I think that it's going to be like a draw. Uh, but they're going to turn around and have to deal with you on this round. That's an interesting thing. So you don't get them to, to completely pull off from their, their... Well, let me just see here. I have an idea. Uh, the loser... Basically, you lose 5% of your forces. And the really bad news is you're forced to retreat initially. So like you try, so here's what happens. This is the first round of battle. Uh, and then I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to roll for them. So you try to get into position to fire arrows and the dragoons really struggle in the mud and they try to get into position to do it. And uh, they're unable to organize in time before you realize that when you get here, this position is really well defended and dug in and you end up getting arrow for arrow. And instead of them chasing you, it actually digs, the, it like kind of en ensconces them further in their defensive position. Uh, they were under no imperative to defend from this direction, but now they've turned around and now they've formed a kind of defensive wall. And it's caused your forces to retreat backwards into the forest. Uh, that happens on the first round, and then I'm going to see how they do. Oh! That's bad. You know, oh, that's good, oh. right? You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, right. so we got twenty, basically, yeah, and then ten, thirty. But they, because their defendants have, so they kind of, basically, they they lose some things. So I'm gonna get rid of some goblins and get rid of some of your knights. And you're gonna lose some of your your battle rating. Okay. Now, out, out of character, you mentioned they had started fires in some of the trees and got smoke going because wet wood. Um, can they see well in thick smoke? Uh, they can't, no, but, you know, the problem is then any counterattack wouldn't be able to see what direction they're advancing from. But both sides can see each other in the siege, you know. Um, I mean, you know, well, it's pretty easy to see the castle, but it's harder to see a bunch of goblins and trees, right? Yeah, well, you mentioned that the force from the north was larger and is coming from the uh, you north. You know what? I apologize. I planned that, and that, that actually, I am so sorry. Because uh, <laughs> I, I, I was like, all right, here's their battle plan, and then I rolled it out. But then I realized that the weather change doesn't make any sense. Of course, that does not happen. They did not burn the forest, and I apologize. That okay. Doesn't, yeah. I was going to say, because it is wet wood, and you can get wet wood to burn if you use a blade to slice the top off or cut into it a bit. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make a lot you, of smoke, but there's uh, it, the other well, thing that's is the point. It, it's is, very it misty. Yeah. Smoke and would it provide a cover for us against the incoming goblin force so that as we move back, it gives us time to shift or run and blocks the visibility temporarily. Um, yeah, you could try to, um, um, I'll give you kind of, so another thing in this round that I didn't do is frame some heroic options. So when you come up on the goblins, and I forgot to do this because it could actually change it. There were just a bunch of goblins and trenches. And I don't, please don't let me forget that. I'm sorry, I screwed this up. So here you were, uh, and, and you're, you're firing arrows and you realize they turn around their firing arrows. I forgot to say that your characters can do something. Do you want to try to like run into their line and attack a bunch of goblins and bodily risk yourselves yet. Uh, I prefer to shoot arrows. Yeah, arrows. Yeah, arrows I'm thinking first. arrows. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to say, so I'll, I'll frame you a few options because it's basically, you can do like a heroic deed, right? To try to like turn the tide. You could try to like just literally charge into their line. Uh, and alternatively, um, you could try to find some way to, you know, if you can think of a clever thing that you could do, um, you could try to do that. Um, 
you've got some forest here. They're dug in here. Um, I don't know if you can think of anything. Oh, I'm trying to think of... So if we've got that other force coming... I'm sorry, and that's another thing. You can also act in this turn. Uh, the plan was oh. to try to bait them and then move, but that didn't happen. How so easy you, is it to chop branches off of trees? Uh, is your goal... What's your goal? Like, what, what Pulling are you a Macbeth, potentially, if anyone's up for that. The walking forest. <laughs> Anyone remember that? <laughs> I don't remember. I, I mean, I, I I know what you mean. Okay, but Macbeth, like in the battle, of the siege, um, some of them cut down branches because he was told he would be taken down by a walking forest, and these the branches because the enemy couldn't see through the the greenery, so you're literally holding branches with thick leaves in front of you, and it <laughs> helps block out arrows as well as visibility. And then by the time your force gets there. They they have a hard time getting any hits in. All right. Here, I don't know if it would work. It was just an option if I, anyone I, wanted to try something crazy. I do think it could work. So I, I would call that like, you know, a counter siege, uh, basically. Here's the downside. Uh, the biggest problem is that they were already here. They've been mm -hmm. here and they've done all this and they've built the siege craft and they've taken over this tower and stuff. You just rode in here, right? So, like, you need to dismount, get your horses, get axes, get equipment, start chopping down trees. So, I'm going to say that's going to take two rounds. Ah, uh, okay. It's going to take time, but you can do it. Um, alternately, you can try to kill them and steal their stuff and do that. And just use theirs. If you could attack their supply train and succeed and drive them off from the tower, you could take their pitch and suddenly you have a bunch of explosives. Ooh. That would be a heroic action. You would imperil yourself. But if it works, it'll, it'll work. Wait, do they have pitch in those trenches? Uh, probably not, but they have, like, you know, oh. supply trains. Like, they have, like, supplies they've gathered and stuff, and they, you know, they circulate what's needed. Uh, so, in uh, my, my thought is, in their command post, uh, they probably have pitch. But I wouldn't see any, like, stashes of it or anything. You see their supplies, yes. But Cause what I'm asking is if we were to fire flaming arrows at that and set it on fire. You could try to drive them out of that tower if you want. Or would that damage the castle? Uh, no, you could use it. What matters is killing goblins. Um... Yeah, I will accompany whatever perilous deed somebody attempts so that it will be less perilous. Yeah. Since you have what a I'm planning on doing is also helmet. to distract them or cause chaos to make it easier to take them out. But... Okay, yeah, so I'm with Helmer anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, uh, let's do it. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to roll. Uh, well, why don't you roll a d100, actually? And you'll add a. Uh, uh, your battle rating is 35. Yeah, 35. Wait, yes. Yes. Okay. Theirs is, I think, 35. 86. So, what'd you get? You have to beat 121. Is it Helmer rolling, or...? Uh, it's you. You, you. You're. This is your force, so you're trying to... And I will say, they don't have the benefits of, like, a, oh, there's a fortification just because they have a building that I didn't okay. intend to... It's not like it's, like, a castle or something. How do I do this again? This will be basically a, you attacking their rear guard. Does that work? All right, so I'm you got an 82 plus 35. Um... When you strike their rear guard, you are unable to uh, to draw them out, and you suffer. I believe it's twenty percent casualties. Ouch! And you're pushed back into the forest. 
think I've got an idea for those incoming... Oh, actually, I didn't... I, I'm sorry. I did this wrong again. Meanwhile, in the battle, you, Alara, can also act. I forgot about that. And you can, um, you know, you can um, try to strike down one of their leaders, or you can fire one of your fire arrows and see if you can hit the thing a pitch, cause chaos, or you can, you know, what, what was it you said you wanted to do before? This would be the time to... Oops. Um... I'll frame some options. You can you can do the fire arrow thing uh, on their supplies. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. You could uh, try to strike their leadership down and like duel a leader before you have to retreat. And maybe you don't retreat. Maybe the heroic deed shifts the tide because you're only off by a few numbers. Um, you could um, just try to kill a bunch of goblins on your own. And if you kill enough of them in a certain number of rounds, it could affect the. You could get your heroic moment off. Um, I can't think of anything else, uh, but there's also like a bunch of supplies here, right? Like there's carts and barrels and booze and, you know, like there's stuff. Oh, and, and booze burns. Part of what I was thinking is if I burn the supplies, they can't use them against us. Mm -hmm. It will set off a distraction and I don't know how many of them are near enough to it that explosions could affect them. But All right. Yep. Let's do it. Roll a uh, roll to hit with your bow, with your Pitch covered okay, arrow with fire. A... And it's a minus two because you're exhausted. D6? It's a D20 plus your dexterity D20. modifier, or you can just do it from your sheet. Uh, you, you can click dex on your sheet and it'll do it. And you subtract two from the result. I'm trying to find that. I think if you double click on your token, oh. it comes up. Where's my token? There it is. Oh, there it is. So click on Dexterity. And D20. Actually, I kind of screwed it up, but anyways, it's 12 uh, plus... I, I did mess it up. It's tw it's an attack. So 12, and that's actually plus 2 is uh, uh, 14, 14, but minus 2 is 12. That still hits the target. So you're able to hit the target and cause all kinds of chaos. Let me see... Uh, what this deed would do for you because uh, I know it's going to cause you to win um, let's see optional rules character actions recon good recon surprise PC heroics here we go accomplishes a heroic task um and you're a force leader, so it gives you a plus 20. And so that turns the tide. And you have 137 to 121. And uh, so I actually need to give you your forces back. There we go. And you do cause them to retreat by burning their supplies. Now, you don't, you don't have their supplies to use anymore, but it's goblin crap anyway. You also have a tower you can use now. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, I think that was it. Am I missing anything? Another goblin force arrives. This is not exactly where they are. I just need to put them on the map. Okay, and meanwhile... Oh yeah, also the battle is joined. Let's see here. Meanwhile, the knights have retaken the temple. These goblins begin a march uh, around to the road, realizing that this was uh, this was a failed mission. Um, the knights find themselves in a quandary, and I'm going to see how they react because. If they sacrifice the temple, they lose their holy site, and the goblins return and burn it. If they don't, then they could imperil Griff's Bluff. The goblins are trying to use this holy site as kind of like a leverage. They 
hesitate and allow Griff's veil or Griff's bluff to fall to its fate for a round. And these uh, these goblins will be able to encircle to the south wall in the next round. Ouch. Meanwhile, uh, let's see here. These are not here. Um, I apologize if you all can't see that. Ooh, it's very close, but the defenders win. Um, and you're starting, well, I mean, you actually, I guess you can't really see this, but uh, it, it it's becoming clear that, like, this is a bad idea, like, to try to siege, like, a bunch of goblins in the mud trying to siege your castle. So, you know, what's going on? All right, back to you all. And we'll go back to Helmer. So, your arrow plan failed. Uh, what do you do now? You can see that uh, a force of goblins was driven out of the tower by Alara's rangers. Um, but now there's a, a force of goblin riders reinforcing them and they're reconstituting. Looks like they'll probably join to it, uh, strike the rangers in this next round. These are, so these guys are riders? Yeah, they're on wargs. Okay, well let's, uh, I think, The rangers would be are these guys a bigger force than uh the dragoons uh they're about equal to them i think let me look here it looks like they are equal to the dragoons except you've lost some like your battle rating has gone down all right i think The rangers are here. Oh, I'm gonna take too long because I think I, I think if we, we charge at them and kind of cut through them, um, hopefully that would whittle them down and leave the rangers to be able to take, make a short work of these guys in the meantime. Once we what's what's your intention? Like, what are you wanting to do? I want to. Uh, uh, I pretty much want to get rid of this this forest here. Um, or hurt them enough that they're not as much of a, of a problem. Um, um, so these are all arriving in one round. Um, so you can do that. You can you can come up here and you can all battle this, this kind of unified force. Uh, and you can make it and both do that in one round if you choose to. Do you think, Bernie, should we... Uh... Should we charge or should we hold? Who was that directed towards? Uh, Birdie. Or, well, uh, any, anybody. Do we have the higher ground here? Uh, yes. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Well, let's let's uh, hold up here because then they uh, they have to climb a hill. In the um, mud. Not yeah. All right. Yeah. No. Let's let's hold the uh, hold the line here. All right. Uh, so you form form a line, and uh, you d defend this tower uh, as they uh, work to reconstitute and then attack. Uh, each of you can roll a d100. Ooh. Uh, I'll have to, and you'll be adding, you each, uh, uh, Birdie will add 35 and you'll add 32. Uh, if I add 35, I get 101. All right, you draw. Let me see what happens when you get a zero. Uh, zero or a draw. I think, um, yeah, anyways, nothing, man. Uh, they probably, you're just joined in battle. 
That's what happens. So they they charge up the hill to retake this position, their command post. And uh, meanwhile, uh, let's see, the other force got a 40 plus 35 is 75. What did you get, Steve? A, uh, let's see, a 72. 72, four, okay, five, three six, difference. Seven, oh, sorry, no, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, 77. Okay, so three different, so they lose 10% and they're forced to retreat, actually. Um, yes. This breaks their forces, uh, and so now their forces are kind of fragmented. Meanwhile, the siege is ongoing. But uh, sieging is, a, is kind of a bad idea, um, as, you know, as is clear. And so things are starting to look pretty good. Um, that is the second round. Let me look at the, let's see here. Two, three. Um, from where you are, you do see something bad. It's probably, it's probably <laughs> easier to see from here there are reinforcements that are several rounds out. Oh, joy. And you hear a, uh, a strange noise coming from the reinforcements. Ooh, that's good. Would any of us recognize this noise? Or any of the elves? I'm, I'm going to make a weird noise here in the thing, but I guarantee you that none of you have ever heard a noise like this. Uh, this is... Like you hear like a, a echoing roar in the mist, but none of you have ever heard this weird warbling noise before. Meanwhile, these goblins retreat from the temple as they have managed to convince the knights to ignore Griff's bluff for a while. What? There we go. That's better. I don't know if anybody can see. Let me uh, let me give you a token so you can see. Can everybody see this? Ooh. I oh. did for a second. There, for a se oh, there, there we it go. is. There you go. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, meanwhile, this is the third round, and they have been re they have been reinforced from the south. Their forces have doubled. They still did terribly. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <Woo> <laughs> 35, 27, 35, 27, 26. Uh, yeah, they they actually are forced to uh, to retreat. Um, <laughs> and uh, at this, when when you see these reinforcements coming, uh, the the House Hillsbro Guard gathers at the gates for some reason it doesn't seem like it would be a very good idea but um, meanwhile back with you all all right uh, so the situation is this the defenders maintain the wall the uh, the, the goblins doing the siege are dug in I forgot to add that bonus but I don't no, that would be enough. But anyways, they um, they are losing their numbers. And meanwhile, you have driven off half of uh, the reinforcements, the riders to the north that came in. And uh, the command post, uh, the commander of this goblin force is engaged with Alara's forces. Starting with, well, actually, what do you all do? Steve, like as a group, what do you all do? I think we should, because uh, we could probably pincer these guys. Just kind of snapshot on them. Because mm -hmm. these these guys are those those guys are infantry, right? Uh, yep. Oh. Additionally, you can see their commander, um, and uh, he needs to go. She's a weird one. She has. Um, She's obviously a wielder of magic. Um, let's see. Oh, 
Ooh. and has been trying to weaken their forces with disease and uh, and grisly displays of you know dead bodies and things like that and spellcraft if, and flying animals and stuff out of character if Alara were to engage shield is she still able to attack while wielding shield as a defense uh you uh, uh yeah uh, the problem is that uh, you wouldn't be able to do that on the same turn as attacking it takes a turn to do that okay well, let's uh what do you guys think about putting just like full don't we have i mean are they still mounted uh are these guys are mounted these guys are infantry Uh, we have a high ground, a cavalry charge downhill, maybe. I'll give you all a plus, uh, plus 20 for that. Awesome. Yeah, that's, It's that's also pathetic. two of you against one, uh, since I'm, you know, whether it's a pincer or whether it's a shock, you know, a, attack, it, you, you outnumber them, so you can both roll, and you can add, uh... 55 to your result. No, no. So, Steve, you would do 52, and then uh, Birdie would do 55. And let's see. Ooh, 91. Ah! Where did I get? Oof. I got 64. 64, okay. Isn't that like plus. uh, 55 overall. That's he did. With, uh, yeah, yeah, he did. My, I got to roll low. Oh, gosh. But Birdie didn't roll, roll, roll low. Yeah. He didn't roll low at all. And then that's plus 55. So, um, I mean, let me look at the results here. And also, you get a chance to do a heroic act uh, if you want to attempt to bodily, you know, like take a risk yourself as a hero. Uh, the enemy commander is here, and we switch to just regular combat. That's how that works. Um, and we would like just do several rounds um, really fast. But uh, there's the enemy commander, and I don't know. And then if you have any ideas, you yeah. know. I want to. Can I take a shot at the commander? Uh, yeah. You, what I would have you do is like inner combat with her. That's what would happen. But. You all are all together, so you can all do this if you wanted to. Uh, it would be you all versus her elite guards. She's got these, like, goblin guards. Put that sword to use. Now, yeah. here's another random question for using shield. I know it would take two turns for me. If I engage it for myself and then use myself as a shield for someone, does that still count? I'll have them attack you, and you'll get the bonus. No, they the attack her... And then when she attacks, I, the shield protects me. So if I'm in front, she can't attack them. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I would have you. I would have her attack you, and then you would gain the benefits of shield. Okay. If you want. Yeah, because I'm like, then he can strike, and I wouldn't have to take two turns to do that, and she wouldn't be lashing out at him, and I have two turns of using shield. Yeah, uh, let's do it. Um, all right. So it gives everyone two turns of inf- going two, after her two, without two her doing turns, anything to them. Two turns means 20 minutes. This It'll last the rest of the battle. I mean, well, <laughs> n- maybe not the rest of the battle. I don't know how long. I don't know what, what, what is happening to time right now in a battle sense. Um, it's it's um, two turns would be two turns. It would be like t- two choices okay. that you can make in battle. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, but I mean that's still good. Um, let's see here. And Helmer. giant rat bite bed. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> Helmer, please roll a d6 for initiative. Here we go. Oh, they get a one. House wins. You oh. got it. You all can attack. Nice. So what's the plus on the sword? Plus three versus chaotic. Plus one overall. Yeah, I can't attack three. if I have shield up, yes. So I wouldn't attack this friend. Right, you yeah, because you cast shield. So I cast what? shield. OSC yeah. shield? Good lord. It's a, I mean, it's, 
No, no, no. She's casting a spell, which is an action, which you do at the end oh, of the Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, do we get, like, arrow shots? Are we doing ranged attack round first, or just all attacks? Or? Uh, you can do all your attacks, yeah. I got a 13. 13. Do, is it just one air, one shot with a missile weapon in OSE? <laughs> yeah. I know, it's a confusing guess. Uh yeah, and your uh, target for her is 13 as well as her bodyguards. Uh, so just let, if you get a 13 on your attack, let me know and tell me who you're attacking. I also need to get Squints on here. Squints, get in here. Going straight for her. Seems a war cry. The claw. Watch probably damage. <laughs> awesome. Throw some rocks. Eight damage. Alright, let me see here. Uh Halfling does four damage. Natural twenty does four damage is eight. Uh so they kill one. And uh I'm missing Oops. a halfling on here. Halfling. Halfling, there it is, 14 and 15, so 3 damage. Okay. Alright, so who hit and where were you attacking? Elmer hits for 8 damage on uh, Magic Goblin Lady. You hit her for 8 damage, she's still alive. She's also going to cast a spell. Well, that's unacceptable. <laughs> well, no, because you hit her, it interrupts her spell, never mind. All right, and then anybody else hit anything? No? Okay. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, they're going to attack. Oh, 15, 11. Uh. These are the uh, bodyguards. I like let's those see. rolls. Uh, 11 misses, 10 misses, uh, 6 misses, uh, 10 misses. Nice. Um, and then she is going to cast Sleep. Oh, shit, she was interrupted. Oh, wait, that's right. She loses her spell, never mind. Thank you. Good, because I would have been EPK right there. The Lord. <laughs> the <Yeah. end. laughs> All right, D6, please, uh, Steve. Okay, here goes. Four. For you, uh, house winds, you all can act. Hey. Oh, and I get to attack this time, don't I? Yep, okay. absolutely. Nice. My goodness, Helmer. The nine doesn't hit. I think Rab Bite, after that horrible display with his bow, is just gonna start going, see a goblin throw a rock as he draws his cutlass and charges <laughs> in. Six damage on her with the, with the long bow. Sure. Going for her. I don't know if I can hit. Strike her. It does not kill her. Uh, it's like three damage Two, to her. Three damage. Can, and then finally, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, Ben, can, you come in and, and slice her dead. She, the commander yes. falls to the ground. I'm going to do a morale check now. here now. They pass the morale <laughs> check. They stand their ground. Did anybody else hit? Did I miss anything? Commander's dead. One of the goblin guards. Two of the goblin guards are going to attack. Uh, they attack... Uh, one of them attacks... Um, well, they both attack Birdie. Or uh, Alara, because you have the um, shield. Did you count my hit the last... Did I hit the last one? Um, I don't know. What uh, I, I, I saw that it looked like you rolled a 2. A d20 and you got oh, a 2. Oh. It's a success, but then it says 2, so I'm not sure... Oh, okay. I'm not sure what that is. It's a dexterity. You did a dexterity check. So the, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, in this game, when you do checks, you roll under your number. But f for an attack, you roll over the number. Yes, okay. it is very that confusing. Sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I, yeah, there's no reason for it. On the player side, there's a reason the game does it. But anyways, uh, let's see. Goblin does, uh, does an 18 hit with your shield. I think your AC is 15 with shield, right? Unless you have um, something higher. 
Let's see, my AC is regularly that, and then with shield, it adds against missile attacks plus two, against any other attack is plus four. Oh, nice. Okay, so uh, yeah, your magic shield in fact works as your so uh, Ben comes around and uh, like well, first of all, um, uh, wait, did Helmer? Did you hit or did you miss? No, I missed. Okay, so <clears throat> anyways, uh, uh, Edward and Ben are just fighting this uh, this goblin sorceress uh, before she can try to cast a spell that oh. could put you to sleep. Edward's and, shooting, just so you know. Okay, whatever. Anyways, you kill her and uh, kill the uh, the enemy commander and uh, several of the bodyguards go down. Meanwhile, uh, the remaining two bodyguards decide to, to make their last stand, but they uh, they strike at Alara and the magic shield prevents it from being able to hit you. Um, and you can roll a d6 again, Helmer. Here we go. Four. All right, house wins, you can attack again. Here it comes. Ah, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hey, there we go. That's better. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, Helmer, you got a D20 plus four? Yeah, I for eight. eight. Yeah, okay. Uh, missed 30 hit for nine damage and killed one of them. And halfling hit for three damage. But <clears throat> 11 didn't hit, did it? 11 does not hit. A 13 does hit. For one. Um, yeah. Um, actually, an 11, uh, you're coming around from behind, so you can use your sneak attack. Because you were over here fighting this dude. All right. How much damage? Uh, plus four, it doubled any damage. No, that's for 12 damage. So Ooh. it's six. Yeah. Dueled Cutlass magic. It just kind of show up behind him and he just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm naming this Cutlass Rock. You, uh, <laughs> you shatter uh, the enemy command post and the enemy leaders. Um, they are now leaderless. And I'm going to make just a blanket morale check here and now. Uh, sorry. And then um, and I'm going to modify it at a plus four. Yeah, they fail, and they see that their commander's dead, and they flee. Oh. You hear cheers from the walls. I mean, you just, like, destroyed their, their leader and all of the their elite guard. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought that was a separate force. All right, okay. That's way better than... Um, meanwhile, uh, so, yeah, this all happens. And meanwhile, um, this is actually not exactly happening here, but a couple of things happen. Uh, you can hear this, this bellowing sound again, and you're not here, but uh, the, uh, the knights form a line again. Uh... In front of the temple as a large force approaches from the east and you hear this um, this this uh, monstrous roar in the distance and oh, I... oh. does the monstrous roar sound like one thing or many things it sounds like one big thing um, so uh I don't even have to. Let me just take a quick look, because but I'm pretty sure that this thing. There's no amount of knights that. Yeah, this is. Uh, oh well, that's a. These, these things, uh, like your brothers, you're not here, but your brothers just like, large numbers of them are just slain, um, and then the rest are broken and flee. Oh, it landed on a nine and then, to the one. Oh. <laughs> Um, and this force, uh, I'm going to kind of fast forward time a little bit here. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the siege on the, uh, the northeast side of the town is broken, but on the southeast side, uh, something is happening. So I'm going to move you over here because this is the only thing kind of happening anyways. 
in the battle at this point. It's all kind of concentrated at one place. And you have two forces here, which are missing several of them. Um, this force doubles and um, Baron Hillsbro joins the battle. It seems like a terrible idea, but um, but his uh, the Hillsbro guard opens the gates and joins the battle. Um, now, you can see that the uh, the thing they're going to they're using they have the kind of main uh, command post here. They uh, they have something in chains that they're pulling, and it's this uh, this huge beast. That does not do it justice. Oh. Let me make it bigger. And uh, they essentially just let the beast loose. Loose, it kills a lot of goblins as it goes. Um, let me show you what it looks like. Oh no. I don't like it. What do you do? <laughs> um. Huh. Oh, I wonder how easy it would be to destroy that bridge. Um. You, you, you probably you discover it doesn't seem to need a bridge as it just like burrows into the ground effortlessly and disappears. Oh, okay, well that's worse. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how terrible! Okay. Um. I think I might get a little too excited, but I was wondering if we should just charge. Uh, the big guy here. Because I think things are going to get go real south real quick. Or we just... Oh, goodness. What do you guys think? Or should we just harry these forces? We should probably harass these guys, eh? Uh, well, since we don't have to deal with that thing we just saw... Everything seems better than that. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like the idea of it burrowing down and not knowing where it's going to pop up either. But I think we know. <laughs> yeah. We're all sitting targets yeah. over here if it comes towards us. But like you said, if we go over towards the goblins, then at least it would be taking out goblins if it resurfaces to get us. Or it'll just come up into the city. Is the big guy looking like he's coming towards us or the city? Uh, this is, I, I, I should clarify, this is just a representative token okay. that represents an enemy command post. This is where they have kind of established all their supplies and their, their command and the elite oh, guard. Or explosives? And, uh, and yeah, the maybe. next commander to take out, potentially? Yeah. Except I use shields. I can't use that again. Well, then we have to take out as many commanders as we can. All right, let's do it. All right, so you have this force in the way, and the first step will have to be charging in. So uh, y'all can, Steve and Bertie, you can roll a D100. What are we adding? Uh, you'd add uh, 35, except Steve, you'd add a 32. And I don't think that I think the the rest of the calculation is in your current battle rating, and I don't think there's any other advantage that would change the math either way. So um, there are two of these forces here, so I'll roll Wait, for both what? of them. I don't know if it rolled for me. That's good news. Did it roll for me or no? Uh, I think so. It looks like you got a ninety-five. Okay. And then Steve got a plus 32. Looks like it got a 38 there on the first roll. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, it gave me an error message, so I couldn't tell if it went through or not. 
Yeah, I don't okay. know what my keep saying test. I'm gonna take that first roll. It's real bad. Um, this is basically the main body of goblin forces, and uh, you're this mounted force, right? So, uh, let's see here. Well, actually, one of them's not that bad. Uh, uh, let me do. Well, it gives me an error message. Does that mean the dice rolled off the table, and so I have to re-roll it? <laughs> No, I don't know why. It's probably because I haven't updated. <laughs> it's probably because I haven't updated the VTT, but I'm too afraid it'll break it. Uh, okay. I didn't add 35 to it because I wasn't sure how to do that. So, not that it'll make a difference, but. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the top force, which would be Steve, you lose 20% of your forces. Um, so, with 40% of your forces now dead of the uh, the dragoons that you lead that leaves you down to let me see let me do the math you have a plus 14 now from now on plus 14 uh, to a d100 um, Ouch. and and additionally they drive you back um, and you have to kind of flee and reconstitute meanwhile um, Alara's rangers fortunately you exceeded them by 12 so you uh, you kill 20% of them, and you drive them back into their command post, which was the goal, at least on your side. Uh, the only bad thing is you don't have the Dragoons backing you up now. So, and then a number of them die as well. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, the siege is going on. I think that's not the most important part. Uh, Baron Hillsbro will join the battle. Uh, he has got a really beefy battle rating with his forces. And the the victorious goblins over the dragoons suffer miserably. And they are also driven back thanks to Baron Hillsbro. Vengeance. And uh, you kind of form a kind of a united um, front here, you know, um, and uh, it, it raising your banners, you, you, you know, your commands eventually come back together. So this takes time. Your shield is gone now, Bertie. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and then like the commanders come together um, and Hillsbro, he. Um, well, that's he sees you all and he says. Well, Rebex Dragoons, I suppose Countess Yester is not without some honor then. And the Rangers, I suppose they actually exist. And my guests. And he sees, you know, Edward and Helmer and everybody. I bow low. I suppose this is your doing. We have much to thank you for. Let us end this threat and drive these things from our lands. Huzzah! Uh, and just as he says that, uh, you hear uh, a roar again. Uh, as, uh, as something bursts from the stone walls from under the ground. And where'd it go? I like to call <laughs> that mayonnaise and vodka. It's a problem for future homer. <laughs> the, entire, uh, the entire wall just shatters uh, as this thing just bursts and burrows through it. Men fly from the walls. It, it devours many of them. And uh, it just starts tearing through the defenders of, of Griff's Bluff. Um, even as it seems as if you might drive the goblins off, it seems that this beast may uh, may tear the city down to its foundation anyways. And that is where we'll end the session tonight.